Hi, welcome back to the Microengineering YouTube channel. My name is Michael Rona, and today's video is all about choosing the right sensors for your drone flight controller. I'm going to walk you guys through all the sensors you're going to need, identify options out on the market, and then also explain which ones I'm going to be using on my flight controller. There's a lot to unpack in today's video, so let's just jump straight into things. All right, so let's start talking about sensors. So sensors are basically like the eyes and ears for your drone. They, uh, they will, they'll tell your drone how high it is in the air, where it is in space, how fast it's flying, you know, all of that stuff. And it's extremely important to choose good sensors because they will directly influence how well your drone well flies itself. So let's start talking about all the sensors that you're gonna need for it. First and arguably the most important sensor is going to be an inertial measurement unit or IMU. IMUs come in two flavors. Uh, the most common are a 6 DOF IMU and a 9 DOF IMU. A 6 DOF IMU features a 3 axis accelerometer and gyroscope, and a 9 DOF IMU adds on a 3 axis magnetometer. So, accelerometers will, you know, measure the accelerations on your drone, including gravitational acceleration. Gyroscopes simply measure angular rotation rates, or how fast your drone is rotating in th um, degrees per second. And a magnetometer is basically a 3D compass. And just like a compass, we use the magnetometer to determine which direction is north, and therefore our magnetic heading. So when searching around online for IMUs, I would recommend getting a 9DOF IMU just because it has all of those sensors contained into one PCB and you don't have to have multiple sensors thrown about your drone. And I would recommend buying an IMU that has at least a 14-bit analog to digital converter, a maximum accelerometer measurement range of 8 Gs, a maximum gyroscope measurement range of 2000 degrees per second, and a sample rate of at least at a bare minimum 100 Hz. Um, IMU is going to be the fastest um, sensor on your drone, so these typically run at like 400 to 600 hertz. So definitely the higher the better. So let's talk about which IMUs I would personally recommend using for your drone. Uh, my 6 DOF IMU recommendation would be the BMI-088 accelerometer and gyro. You can pick it up for about 14 bucks online, and in its datasheet says it's designed for uh, robotics and drone applications features an accelerometer measurement range from 3 G's all the way up to 24 G's and a um, gyro measurement range from 125 degrees per second all the way up to 2000 degrees per second. It has relatively low noise and is pretty new to the market so this definitely looks like a good choice. My 9 DOF IMU recommendation would be Adafruit's BNO055 based Absolute Orientation IMU Fusion Breakout Board. You can pick this up for about $35 online, and this is basically like a one-stop shop for IMUs. If you don't want to write all of your own sensor fusion algorithms, this is the one for you. Because it performs all of these sensor fusion algorithms on board. You don't have to develop them, you can save yourself a bunch of time and sanity, it does everything for you. So if you don't want to worry about that, buy this sensor. The IMU I'm using on my drone is going to be Adafruit's FXOS8700 and FXAS2102 9DOF IMU. You can pick it up online for about 15 bucks, and in their product description says it has two of their best sensors and have pretty low noise, so those are the reasons why I chose to use this one. It features an accelerometer measurement range from 2 Gs all the way up to 8 Gs, and a gyro measurement range from 250 degrees per second all the way up to 2000. So now let's talk about the sensor we use to determine our drone's altitude. And to do that, we use a barometer or pressure altimeter, like I like to call it. And so we use a barometer to measure um, pressure, the pressure difference from our takeoff altitude to the altitude that we're flying at. And we can use an equation called the hypsometric equation that when you plug in a pressure difference, will output a change in altitude, just like we want. So that's the reason why I call it a uh, pressure altimeter. My barometer recommendation would be the BME280 temperature, pressure, and humidity sensor. Now you don't need to measure humidity, but you know, it's another data point that you can log. You can pick it up um, online for less than 10 bucks if you do some digging. It has pretty low noise, and in its data sheet says it's targeted towards um, navigation systems. It is capable of oversampling and has an integrated filter which will help reduce noise and uh, smooth out sharp changes in pressure. And the sample rate can go all the way up to 150 hertz, so this definitely looks like a good option. 
The barometer I'm using on my drone is Adafruit's BMP388 pressure and temperature sensor. I picked it up for about 10 bucks. I think it has lower noise than the one above. And in its data sheet says it's targeted towards drone and navigation applications. It also has the capability of doing oversampling and has an integrated filter that will both help reduce noise and smooth out sharp changes in pressure. This thing's sample rate can be cranked up all the way up to 200 hertz if you need it. But we definitely don't, don't need to go that high, but you know, it's great that we have the option too. All right, so the last sensor I'm gonna talk about for our drone is going to be the GPS or GNSS sensor. A GPS, of course, tells our drone its latitude, longitude, and altitude, as well as its uh, velocity and heading. And so when we implement a um, position hold or altitude hold flight mode on our flight controller, our um, GPS's position accuracy is going to directly influence how well our drone is going to maintain position or altitude. So therefore, we need to choose a pretty good GPS. So when you're looking around online for a GPS module, the three parameters I would pay the most attention to are, of course, the position accuracy, the sample rate, and also the number of GPS networks you can connect to. And position accuracy as well, how accurate our GPS can estimate our position. So for example, if your drone's uh, GPS has a five meter position accuracy, that means if you keep your sensor stationary, most of its position readings will fall within a five meter circular radius of your true position. Sample rate is pretty self-explanatory. It is the frequency at which new um, GPS position and velocity updates are given. And for your drone, you want this number to be as high as possible. Um, typical hobby grade GPS sensors have sample rates at around one to five hertz, which is pretty low. But as you spend more money, of course, uh, it gets better. But higher and higher end ones uh, go up to 10 hertz, even 20 hertz and beyond. Again, the higher is better. And then finally, the number of satellite networks that your GPS can connect to is very important because as the number of satellites your GPS connects to increases, the better your horizontal position accuracy will be. Cheap GPS sensors typically can only connect to the US's GPS ne network, but um, more expensive ones can connect to um, Russia's GLONASS network, uh, China's Baidu network, Europe's Galileo network, and India's IRNSS network. All right, so now let's talk about um, my GPS recommendations. Uh, my first recommendation would be Adafruit's Ultimate GPS Module. You can pick it up for 40 bucks on their website. It has a 10 hertz sample rate. And as far as I know, it can, can, only, it can only connect to uh, the US's GPS network, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So um, comment down below if, um, if I'm incorrect. On their description, it says that it has a three meter horizontal position accuracy, but of course, that's probably a best case number, so take that with a grain of salt. And also has an integrated antenna and a USB port for uh, computer connectivity and configuration. My second GPS sensor recommendation would be the Byton BN220 GPS. You can pick this up for about 17 bucks on Amazon, and it features a 10 hertz sample rate, and it can connect to multiple GPS networks, which is awesome. It has an advertised two meter horizontal position accuracy. I would again uh, take that with a grain of salt because that's like best case number, so got to do your own testing to figure out its actual position accuracy. And to be honest, this one looks kind of jank and it may be difficult to mount uh, to your drone because the board doesn't have any screws, but if you can make it work, it seems like a pretty good option. So finally, the GPS sensor I'm going to be using on my drone is the Neo 6M GPS module. I picked it up for 13 bucks on Amazon, so that's pretty cheap. Uh, after some tinkering with the settings, I was able to get it up to a 5 hertz sample rate and then fortunately can only connect to the uh, US GPS network. After some very brief testing I conducted, I found it has about a 5 meter horizontal position accuracy, but I still have to do some in-depth testing with it and so it might be a little bit better than that. Uh, so we'll see how well, how well it works. Alright, so that is all of these sensors I would deem essential to your drone flight controller. So if you're looking for like the bare minimum sensor suite to have on your drone, the bare minimum is to uh, have a 6 off IMU. Now if you choose to only use a 6 off IMU, you will be limited to being able to only fly in what's called rate or acro mode. And that's what like the professionals fly in. It's really hard to control, it's pretty unstable, and um, if you learn how to fly in that, you're probably going to crash a lot. But as you add more sensors, like the uh, barometer and GPS, you're able to program more advanced flight modes that are much more stable and a lot easier to fly with. 
and any additional sensors beyond an IMU um, barometer and GPS is kind of unnecessary because uh, you're getting in some really complicating stuff and programming and it's not really worth the um, time you'll invest in the weight you'll add to your drone in my opinion. All right, that's about it for this video. I really appreciate you sticking through to the end. I uh, hope you found the list of sensor recommendations I made useful. And don't forget to drop a like and comment on this video. I really appreciate your guys' input. And don't forget to also subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with my progress. The next few videos in this series are going to be about how to actually use the IMU barometer, maybe even the GPS sensor as well. That about concludes it for this video. Uh, until the next video, see you later.